as um, for the um, for your attorney. Okay. Um, for Ms. Helton and um, also for the county clerk. Okay. And um, just to clarify for everyone's knowledge, I'm not asking for any action whatsoever at this time other than to review and consider whether or not the petition is considered to be complete or not. Are we missing information? Um, the way the law is written, you have up to 60 days to consider whether or not it's complete. And if you deem it not complete, please tell us at Snowshoe what's missing. And then we have the you know, obligation to provide that. And it's only at the time that you accept the complete um, app, uh, petition that you, um, you know, then, then you would have to set your, your public hearing dates and, and all of those. And, and uh, you need to give at least six, 60 days after accepting it as complete before you can even um, consider whether or not to adopt the petition or not. So, so we're still anywhere from, you know, well, as much as 120 days or more away from, from that type of action. So there's still a lot of time available for public comment. But um, I believe it is a complete petition. Um, I will, um, I had mentioned to, to each of you that I can be available. Um, I can't be at the next meeting. I can be at the April 15th meeting to answer any questions on it. And then any other time between now and the end of that 60 day period, I can be available either in person or by phone if you okay. let me know what it is. Um, I am out of town the first two weeks of May, so. Um, okay. But again, by phone, I can certainly be available. This, uh, this petition, um, I know we have press, right, and everybody, this petition will be um, on our website under the homeowner. If you go to the bottom of our website and click on homeowners, you'll see uh, the homeowner website where there's a section about the resort area district. And um, by the end of the day tomorrow, I hope to have this, um, if not the end of the day tomorrow, certainly by the end of the week, we'll have this uploaded and available. And if anybody wants copies, we'll be glad to provide copies too. So, I, yeah. So, but that's I'm just asking to, that you accept that. It's a you know it's obviously been a lot of work on our part over time, but um, start the process. Well, thank you, Mr. Berry. Um, I think April 15th would be a good time to talk about it again. Uh, it's an <coughs> evening meeting, and we've had uh, several people, including uh, Mr. Milliken, who just here, um, has expressed to me earlier that he would like to see this matter discussed in the evening meetings. So, yeah. and I, I think that probably makes more sense to, to do it that way. More people might be able to attend if they have questions. I'll absolutely be here on the 15th. Okay. So we'll add this to the, the 15th to uh, discuss or act on whether we think it's complete or not. Mm -hmm. And um, then we'll. Uh, Go from there. Okay. Um, I, for one, am pleased with the, the discussions and the work uh, we've had on this. Uh, you and I have talked quite a bit about it, and um, I know the other commissioners have spoken with you about it. Yeah. And my principal concern, I think, has been addressed. I presume in the draft you have here, and I'll, I'll read it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, that a lot of the homeowners were concerned about uh, the ability to have assessments levied against their property value in order to build capital projects. And, I asked uh, you uh, to consider delaying that possible uh, provision for three years, and you, you said that's fine. Mm -hmm. I think that would give that would give three years for the for the RAD board to uh, get some experience under the belt and decide whether they have <coughs> an option to go from there. Mm -hmm. But I do really appreciate the uh, the need, and I agree uh, for the resort service fee, as it's called, which allows you to put. You're estimating around a 2% tax, as much as 5 legally, but I think right. you want to start at 2. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that would uh, make up for uh, the loss that you're experiencing from the mountaintop right. assessment due to decreasing property right. values. That's on, and that's on the goods and services, not on goods not and services. property. I just want to make sure I'm okay. clear just that's not a property tax. If, if you uh, buy some food, if you rent some skis, that kind right. of thing? Right, exactly. Food, skis, lift tickets, okay. um, retail sales, things like that, mm -hmm. on the mountain itself. On the mountain. And in no way does this impact at all or touch upon uh, hotel motel tax or property tax. It does not. It, it does not uh, touch the county coffers at all. Right. Uh, so I think I think you got a creative way here to, uh, a good way to to make up for the loss in mountaintop assessment. You know, we're all seeing the, the effect of the decrease in property values at the county budget, which we have in front of us here uh, tonight. We, we had to make up for quite a bit of, uh, cut off quite a bit of expenditures to, to make the budget look good going into July 1st. So 
we feel the same pain, and uh, <laughs> I hope we can work together and find a way to, to help snowshoe in the area there, supplement their loss in mountaintop assessment with some resort service fee. I think the RAD board also gives the property. Mr. Milliken, again, I kind of wish he was here, um, spoke about the incorporation. We've talked about incorporating snowshoe and the pros and cons of that and, mm -hmm. and how uh, it, it may be just too much to try for, at least at this time. And, uh, and, it, and it doesn't take into account the, the, um, you know, the, it doesn't give any votes to the people who don't live there but own the property. Right. right. That's, a, that's the big drawback with incorporation. Yeah. Right. This gives, uh, to my understanding, from talking about it extensively with you, gives the best model for representation for the people who live there. That's, like that. that's what we do. Yeah. Any questions, comments from Mr. Berry? Okay. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's.